with what was approved by the board and the size, scope of the house, meeting all setback requirements as amended or as granted, um, no. No? No. Okay. Any other board members have questions? I see. I see Bruce referring to the uh, the ordinance. Is Mr. Lewandowski correct in assuming that the house has to be substantially completed within 12 months? Or Why don't I just read the ordinance? I'm looking at it now. That's I, wording. Yes. Not with this is uh, as the minutes or as the agenda suggests. Uh, Article 5, Section 19-5-4E. Uh, notwithstanding the recording of a certificate of a variance, the applicant's legal rights set forth in a variance shall expire if the construction or alteration involved is not substantially completed within one year from the date on which the Zoning Board of Appeal votes to grant the, uh, voted to grant the variances. The board may grant one extension for up to one additional year upon written request of the applicant. Uh, and then it just says it applies for anything after January 1, 1989. So it has to be completed within one year, and you can grant up to one extension for one year. It would be kind of too bad if you tore it down and didn't do much after that and is left with a non-conforming lot. <clears throat> That's true. So uh, wait, I want to be sure I understand what you're saying, that if, if we get granted extension and they don't get it done within the next year, they're in serious trouble. Is that what you're saying? Or did I misinterpret Well, you can interpret it that way, but yeah, yeah it, I mean, we're okay. talking tearing the building down completely and then starting over again. Sure. And, uh, if, you, if you grant them 12 more months, obviously it should, it should take place in 12 months. Um, it should take place in less, less than 12 months. I, I just didn't like the, the, uh, the wording of the ordinance that it must be substantially completed uh, if it's started within one year, and that's the interpretation that I had. Mm. That would be the more typical uh, thing. I didn't I've write the order. Over the it certainly make more sense, but. Mm. It, if I may address the board, I guess we found that uh, although it most likely would be started this year, I want to approach the board at this time and date because there was no way it was going to be substantially completed within that one year period. Keep in mind that the uh, variance was granted on December 29th, so we're talking about 15 months, really, that they would have to complete it. I assume if we act on it tonight, it would be added on to the original date, correct? That would be what I would assume. All right. I think your ordinance stated, as you read it, up to 12 months. So you can put a, you can extend it for 12 months or six one, months. One additional or year, yes. Up to one additional year. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Lewandowski? Uh, as, as a point of information, there's a street, one street away from me, not too far from you actually, uh, family bought a piece of land about three months ago, found three contractors to bid on the house, and that house is well underway already. So there seems to be uh, plenty of contractors at least a few months ago that we're looking for work building houses. You know, Jack, you're right. They're out there. It's just a matter of finding them. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, I wish I had. I'm ready to go. I, I really am. Um, it's, I, he, I can't address, they perhaps already had plans in place, in place. My dilemma was starting really the whole plan process, the blueprints, revisions, um, you know, that, like I said, took up three months of that. Uh, and I'm left with a balance of the time. There was a chance I could, uh, a couple months ago, uh, perhaps substantially completed it. But I, it, it just, it wasn't ready. It would have been too fast. And I, I chose this approach. Um, if the request is not granted, you'll certainly see a house go up one way or the other. Yeah, I'm just suggesting that you may talk to the, yeah. to the family that's having this other house built and find out from them what contractors were available for your own say. Yeah, you know, and there is a lot of building. I, I don't dispute that fact at all. Um, there was some demolition involved. That had to be done. Um, I do want to connect to the sewer. We're on septic. I thought it was in all best interest, 
including ours, to connect to the sewer. Uh, I looked into an excavator. Uh, there was some preliminary stuff that needed to be done prior to the, prior to the framing. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Lewandowski. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify on this application or request? If not, I'll declare the hearing closed <coughs> and just ask Mr. Smith, are you aware, uh, Bruce, of any changes in the community, especially right around this lot, that uh, would need to be brought to the board's attention before acting on this proposal? No, I'm, no I am not. Okay, with that, is there any discussion on the part of the board or a motion? Please. <laughs> um, I move to extend the previously approved variance of December 29th, 1998, as allowed by Article 5, Section 19-5-4E of Chapter 19, to extend the variance for one year. Second. Discussion on that motion. Joe? We're extending it for one year, so it would be substantially completed by the 20, uh, December, the year 2000? Correct. Millennial House. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? I see none. And it carries. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Lewandowski. Thank you. Uh, have you found a place to live while you're yes. waiting? Yes, we have. Yeah. Next item is uh, number two on the agenda, to hear the request of Mark L. Bodler, 452 Old Ocean, Old Ocean House Road, tax map U42, lot four, for a right side property line setback reduction of 10 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a 24 by 24 foot garage addition. Someone here representing Mr. Bodler, please. Go ahead. Do you have anything to say to the board? My name is Mark Cobler. I own and live at 452 Old Ocean House Road. And uh, uh, basically here to see if I can get the setback reduction approved for the 24-24 edition, garage edition. One thing the board might want to know is uh, regarding the property. I purchased this property about a, a year and a half ago, and the previous owner had a variance approved um, for an addition that was never built. So it's not a, it's not another addition as well as that addition. It, there was an addition that was approved about 18 months ago, but it was sold to me, and they never built it. Um. I went up to look at this, and I've looked at your, this is your plan, right, for your, the big one? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure it wasn't the previous owner. No, uh, it was my plan. Okay. Uh, do I understand correctly that what you're planning to do is take the existing garage and, and convert it to living space and then put the new garage around? No. No? The existing garage is going to stay the same, and I want to build a, a two-car garage behind it. An additional that, garage? An additional garage. The existing garage is a little bit tight. If you try to park two full cars, full size cars in, it, it's just too small. And if you want to put bikes or trash cans or anything else in there, it just crowds it. On top of the fact, I, as a hobby, I have a couple of antique cars that I'd like to be able to store in my residence and uh, year round. And that is the reason for the extra space. And it, if you look at the plans, you can see we've taken a lot of special care to make it conform to the residential style. It, it, it's, it doesn't look uh, intrusive. And I've spoken with my neighbor, Mike, at Lot 6, who abuts the property that I'm 
um, uh, going towards with a setback reduction in quite some depth, and he has no problem at all with it. Uh, he's, he, my closest neighbor is 250 feet away, and that's the uh, Mike who lives on that side of the, on lot six, which you can see on the plot plan there. I've also spoken to uh, the Jordans next door who are on the opposite side and they said they had no problem with it either. Well, I guess the obvious question that occurs to me then is why not just move the garage five feet and be done with it? Excuse me? <clears throat> Why not move the garage further to the north? Oh, to towards the um, center of the yard, you mean? Toward, so that I don't overlap? Toward L. Wife Cove Road, yeah. Well, there's a couple reasons, because the garage is basically going to cover all the windows to the kitchen. If, if I encroach that direction, it also gets closer to the septic tank, or excuse me, the, sep the, the leach field. And that's the reason that it's pushed to the side like that. Okay. Thank we you. tried hard to be able to do it within the, the uh, provisions of the lot, but we weren't able to make a, a decent design of it and keep it looking nice and keep the house uh, well designed, basically. Thank you. Do other board members have questions? Yeah. What was the variance approved for in the past? When it was. Bedroom. It wasn't for garage, it was for bedrooms and a bathroom to go out. They were actually going to remove the leach field and it was going out the left side of the house. But it was also <coughs> over the uh, building line, but encroaching towards um, Alwives Cove Road. Any other questions? But does the new driveway run right along the property line? Is that the. Yes, but I, as far as I understand, there's no setback on a driveway. And I have enough clearance um, to, to pass through there without encroaching over the property. Joe? That's eight foot? Yes. Uh, an eight foot clearance, you're saying? And you feel that's eight feet between right, the, that's the, the, the point. existing garage and the property line? Mm -hmm. Do we have any correspondence from the abutter on this, approving or? I had no correspondence. Nothing at all? No. Does he understand that it is eight feet and? Oh yeah, He's, he was at my house last night for an hour and we walked the whole thing and uh, he said, do, you, do I need to go to speak in your half, behalf? And I said, I don't, he had another meeting in town and I said, I really don't believe so unless you're opposed to it. And he said he didn't have any problem with it at all. His only concern was it, he, he wanted to make sure he didn't lose any privacy to his property and there's a huge pine tree that blocks the whole view of this garage between his property and mine. And he's 250 feet, 54 feet, I believe, to the nearest corner of his house. Yes, I noticed that it sets back there. But I also noticed that, that it is awful close to the property line. Are you planning to drive back there on a regular basis, on a daily basis? Probably not on a daily basis now, but it'll be driven through there, yes. But it's, it's not a problem. I've tested it. And um, I've got room to, to pass through there, and I've also got approval to use the dirt road beside me. If I need to enter from the other side, I could, but I probably wouldn't. Because it's all open all around me. There's a vacant lot behind me as well with no, no property. Uh, and, this, and the purpose of this garage is for what? Basically. For my own personal use, I have a couple of antique cars, and it's a hobby of mine, and I'd like to be able to store them uh, year-round at my property, at my residence. And uh, the garage I have now is a little tight. It's not quite wide enough. But it's, it's, not, it's not for any other purpose? No. This is one where I, I am very confused on. Uh, when we're asking for a variance, um, we have set guidelines that we use. And yeah, keep in mind, though, this is not a variance. This is a setback that's, reduction. That's what I'm saying, yeah. and, and uh, it's a little different. Could, I, 
I wonder if uh, the chair or Bruce Smith could clarify why it's coming before us for a setback reduction as opposed to a variance. Well, it's a, it's a conforming lot. I can clarify part of that yeah. for, the, for the board. Um, Go ahead. You know something I don't, please. I know that, that we kept the, we were uh, careful in the design so that it would go within a, a setback reduction rather than a variance for height limits. We didn't raise the height, and uh, there was a couple other things too, I think. That, uh, setback proof. reductions can be granted, or applicants can take a variant, a, a, an appeal to the board for a setback reduction if there's already an existing building within that setback, provided that it doesn't go closer to the property line, it doesn't cre increase the height of, of, of the building expansion. Um, if it is, it is consistent with setbacks for, for, for existing properties, that the nonconformity is created through a change in the zoning regulations, and a request meets the condition you stand as a 1955D. It's only good for setbacks to side and rear, but not to front. And, and only if there's already an existing nonconformity on a nonconforming or conforming lot. So that's a difference between a setback reduction and a variance. Okay, and the, the second conclusion would be that it was created through a change in the town zoning ordinance. Is, is that zoning regulations, is that accurate? The, the building was built prior to the setbacks, current setbacks, which meant that it was conforming, but it became non-conforming because of a zoning change which required larger setbacks. If indeed a variance was granted last year for the garage, then he couldn't come this year because it wasn't, it wasn't uh, created through a change in the town zoning ordinance. So he wouldn't be able to take advantage of a setback reduction if a variance had been granted for that situation last year, only if it's there prior to. It, it, as Bruce pointed out, it's also required to meet the uh, conditional use standards, which are on page 48 of your, I'm not sure what page they're on in the brand new book, but at least my old book, they're on page 48. Uh, page 15. Uh, page 15, okay. I haven't taken the time to recodify my new book with it. Um, and so if there's any questions you have about those issues, they, are, they were, uh, by the way, listed in the application and the, uh, Mr. Butler responded to the questions <clears throat> with his opinion as to how those things would be met. Any other questions for the applicant? Just, just one more Go question. Ahead. I guess I want to hear it from the applicant that this isn't going to be used for a business, future business use uh, of any nature at all, that this is going to be for personal use it's, and it's specifically not specific. It's residential personal use. It's my home residence, and like I said, I have a couple of antique cars. That yeah, I've heard that, but I want you to say that you're not going to use it for your business. I'm not going to use it for my business. All right, thank you. Not, not to defend the applicant, but his situation as being an electrical contractor is no different than your situation as a, a building contractor or, or anybody that brings their equipment home. I certainly wouldn't want to lock this applicant into not being able to bring in his fuse boxes that he just picked up at the store because he had a good sale. I don't think the intent, uh, I, don't, I hope not the intent, is not the intent of, that, of you to, to put him in that predicament. No, it's not. Okay. It definitely is not, but I just, I, uh, it's kind of unusual to add a, a uh, 24 by 24 garage with two bays uh, when you already have an existing 24 by 24 garage. Uh, so, I mean, I just... It's just a, it's a priority for me because it's personal interest. I like to have the space and I don't want to leave my cars out in the hot sun in the summer. I'd rather keep them sheltered and in the winter I'd keep them out of the snow and ice. And if I've got the money to do it, I'd like to be able to do it. It's, it's really not a... I understand not everybody wants to do it, but it's just you know, something that... And I'd like to be able to stay in this residence. I really like the location, but it'd be tough to do that if I'm not able to... There is a, a substantial gray area in, in, in that situation. And, and the way I've looked at it in the past, if somebody wants to put up a sign and create an office, then, then, then we got to look at whether that use is allowed in a particular district and what we have to categorize it as. Beyond that, we all have to realize that there's many contractors that park their vehicles at home and do use their, their garages for 
for whatever. And I don't know how, beyond how I handle it, how we could jump on the bandwagon and take care of that situation. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Thank Sir, you. Anyone else who wishes to uh, speak on this application? Seeing none, uh, declare the hearing closed and open it up for board discussion. The only comment that I would make here is really in follow-up to Anne's question about being a little bit confused as to why perhaps this wasn't presented as a variance instead of a setback. Um, when I looked at this, I had the same question. In fact, I went to Bruce and asked him to clarify for me why this was a setback and not a variance. And I think that some of the confusion comes from the ordinance itself is poorly written. And in fact, in section 19, dash 5 dash 2 D on page 46 of the new ordinance it says in, in enumerating the powers of this board it says the board has the power to consider requests for reduction of the setback requirements in accordance with the procedures and standards of 19 dash 7 dash 10 but it doesn't say anything at all about setbacks in accordance with the section that this is actually before us under which is a completely different section. And I suggested to Bruce that maybe it was appropriate to, as a technical amendment, have the ordinance amended to clarify these two different setback. Well, the bottom of page sections. 33 does say the Board of Appeals, Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a further reduction. I realize that. Yeah. Uh, but page 46, section D of 1952, which is a specific enumeration of this board's powers, doesn't cross-reference that section. And just as a technical amendment, it seems that it probably should. Yeah, Great. this is a, point of, point of a relatively new edition. Right? This is dated August 11, 1999. The material on page 33 is dated right. August Well, that, that, that was always, that, that wording was in there. It just was rephrased for clarification. Yeah. But I would like to bring up to the board that after talking to Mr. Backer, I did go to the town planner to see if I could get some history on, on what, what they classified um, reductions, setback reductions, other than the one listed under 19.710. And they had always, what, what she told me, the history is that they've always considered the, the reduction in setbacks that the Board of Appeals could approve outside of the scope of a variance as a conditional use permit. Um, and there may be some political motivation behind that. I'm not sure, but um, the category that, that historically has been put in is C on page 46. Im implying that the planning board may not have an interest in clarifying the matter. <laughs> I'm not asking for it. wasn't a question. It was a statement. <laughs> uh, any other discussion uh, from board members on this proposal? If not, uh, I'm open for a motion. I'll move that the board approve the request of Mike Wadler, 452 Old Ocean House Road, tax map U42, lot four, for a right side property line setback reduction of 10 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a 24 foot by 24 foot garage addition. Second. Discussion of the motion. There is none. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? I see none. <clears throat> Enjoy your antique cars, Mr. Butler. <clears throat> Item number three is to hear the request of Suzanne S. McMullen, 1251 Sawyer Road, tax map R05, lot 51A for a conditional use permit to operate a home business from within the basement of the existing single family dwelling. So someone here representing the applicant. Hi. Um, I'm Sue McMullen, 
I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth at 1251 Sawyer Road, which is new to me. And I'm owner director of Alfred Lake Camp. Um, summer residence is in Hope, Maine, and winter residence until now was here in Cape Elizabeth on Pilot Point Road. And I've never been to the Board of Appeals, so this is new. <clears throat> um, well, gee, I ought to do it every year just to have some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pop up here and say hi. Um, I filled out your questionnaire and, and think that I've answered most of the questions, but I'm happy to, to go through it again if you'd like me to. We have one employee who comes to us approximately four days a week from the outside of Cape Elizabeth Inn. Uh, the majority of our sales, so to speak, happen by phone and or by mailing, and I um, included <laughs> our mailing to you, one of our mailings, <clears throat> to give you a sense of Alfred Lake Camp. Um, we would be using the existing basement, um, approximately two-thirds of it, for an office with workspace for three of us, and um, space for copy machines and uh, postage meter, and the rest is done by phone and by mail. <clears throat> I made some a feeble attempt to show you what the property looked like from the road and from our two neighboring properties to see, you know, what they can see and if anything would be disruptive. We, as I say, we have one person who comes in from the, ins from the outside in. <coughs> the only changes um, to that property might be delivery from FedEx or UPS, which might come in maybe once, maybe twice a week at the most. Have you uh, talked to the neighbors about this? I've talked with all the neighbors whose property abuts ours. I don't know all of them yet, but I've met those three or four. Um, and they were fine with it and realized that this hearing was taking place. And I also have some people here who have been neighbors in the past of where our office used to be, and a, and a note from someone who couldn't come, who could vouch for us being good neighbors. Have you, you haven't been there over a winter yet, I gather. You, you have not been living here over a winter? No. When I was there yesterday afternoon, I noticed uh, well, I didn't count, but aside from the child's little cart that was running up and down the road, uh, there were at least five cars in the, in the area uh, down by the house. And I, the only thing I wondered was, what that, what's that going to look like in the wintertime if, you, if that's typical uh, of the traffic patterns that are there already? We are, we're having renovations done. There were two vans in the yard that were workmen's cars. We have um, one of our counselors staying with us who's using one of our cars who will be leaving in two weeks. And um, I think those were the, the three vehicles that were over and above what we have. We have three of our own, two vans and a tourist wagon that will be there, but because we're all residents. Other questions from the board? On the building permit, I see a name John Rich. Mm -hmm. Is he a contractor? Yes, he is. He's our general contractor. Okay. The property is in your name? Yes, it is. Did you buy it from Richard Tinsman? I did. Okay. I'm just trying to find the uh, progression here. I see a septic systems with his name on it, the building permit. I just wanted a clarification of that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this application? Looks like you brought half of Alfred Camp with you here. <laughs> uh, we aren't intimidated by numbers, though, trust me. Um, if there are no other uh, persons speaking, I'll close the hearing and invite uh, discussion on the part of the board. I'm sorry, I have one more question. Go ahead. Did you do this from your, exist your previous home? No, we're in the basement of another home. In Cape Elizabeth? In Cape Elizabeth. Okay. Um, and there was no problems in that location? Just for the tape, <laughs> the answer was another home in Cape Elizabeth and no problems. Okay. Uh, I, I question, was it, yeah. uh, was there a conditional use granted for that? 
business or not? That, that business, that, that business No, we, I guess you better come back up here. It's going to get complicated. I don't want to add to the confusion in the minutes. Thank you. That business was operated in the basement of um, the home that was owned by my mother-in-law who owned Alford Lake before I did. And there was never a question about the office that existed there. So I really can't tell you other than that. It was before I... For quite some time. We've been in the town for about, well, over 35 years. The office. The office. That's but I've only owned Alfred Lake for, um, well, technically, I've only owned Alfred Lake for the past year. I'm presuming, and I'd ask Bruce to clarify, that was it in the process of granting the, um, the, the permit for the renovations that it became apparent that there needed to be this um, when I went request to, to the board? Yeah, when I went to do an, an inspection for framing and electrical, I realized that there was workstations down there that led me to believe there was just more than a personal office. Nobody ever really misled me one way or another when they applied, but that's when I called Ms. McMullen and asked her if she, what her intent was, and, and she told me, and hence she came to the board. So the permit was issued assuming that it was a, a personal office. And, and just to clarify, in addition to residents, yourself and family members, there's one additional person who would be driving in each day to work, um, but only one? Only one for Alfred Lake Camp Wright. And he comes in about four times a week. Okay. Now the hearing's over. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further need of discussion, or can we do a motion here? All move that the board approve the request of Susan Suzanne McMullen, 1251 Sawyer Road, tax map R05, lot 51A, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business from within the basement of the existing single family dwelling. Second. And I assume that that motion is based on the conclusions set forth in the proposed order, uh, one through five? That's correct. Any discussion of the motion? Would it be appropriate to uh, limit the conditional use to uh, a home business with one, no more than one full-time employee other than that's required part of the conditional use. That's a requirement. If you do, they do more than that, they'll be in violation. Okay, so. That's that's in the in the regulations. It's part of or the business regulations. It's in the regulations. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? I didn't know David Davidson. All those in favor of the motion, then. Anybody opposed? She's in a good mood tonight. Do you want your packet back? That's not an inexpensive uh, pamphlet. <laughs> Please take them if you want them. They'll just end up in the recycling bins. Because so. I read it cover to cover, so you don't, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Next item is number four. To hear the appeal of Jeffrey A. Stevenson and Dana L. Tratner, 8 Hampton Road, tax map U19, lot 23, for a right side property line variance of 10 feet from the required 25 feet to add a 24 by 24 garage. And I got a problem? And 14 by 14 and 7 by 14 porches to the existing single family dwelling. Hi, how are you? Well, this is my first time too. Um, I guess to summarize the- Better tell us who you are, first of all. What? Who are you? Oh, I'm Dana Tratner. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and would, you, would you move that mic down just a little bit? There you go, thanks. Sure. Um, on our street and in our neighborhood, we're about the only house that does not have a attached garage or a garage. Um, so, Adding our garage would add to the value of our house. Um, the reason why we need the variance is that um, 
it's basically the north side is the only place where we could add a garage. On the south side, um, a garage would be very close to our leach field. And also, in the winter, we get considerable solar heat, um, and which would be blocked if we put a garage right by the house on the south side. Um, this, the zoning code was changed since our neighborhood was built, and so there are many structures that don't really conform to the existing uh, regulations. And um, so we feel that our garage would improve the neighborhood. Um, it would add a, make our house equal to the rest of the neighborhood. And um, the porches that we're talking about would be facing the, our backyard, so it would not be visible at all from the street. All done? What? Are you all done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, before I ask you a question, Bruce, I just want to be sure I've got an uh, application for a building permit and you've written an initial denied on September 7th. That was because of the setback issue? Yes. Okay. Uh, one thing that confused me a little bit. Uh, Ma'am, is the maybe and maybe and I don't claim to be any expert at reading these plans, so either you or Joe can straighten me out. But it would appear from looking at it that there's at least five and maybe six feet between the edge of the proposed driveway and the house, such that you could move the garage and be within the setback. Uh, uh, why didn't you do that? If I'm right, I might be wrong, not right. We're planning on the garage being kind of equal to the house, not behind the house. Doesn't appear that way in the drawing. The the, uh, the garage is offset from the house by my my measuring sticks at about six feet. But hmm. according to the mortgage inspection, Inside. if you scale it out, um, I do believe. Well, I'm just looking at the plan I was handed. I... Right. Well, I, I scaled off the mortgage inspection to see what the measurement was, and and it's about 41 feet. So 24 and 15 is 39. So there's a couple feet there. So you're saying that the plan that's in the application is not to scale? I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I did scale off the mortgage inspection and I got 40 feet. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Bruce, when you say 40 feet, you mean uh, from the edge of the house to the property line? Or what, what's the 40 feet you're talking about? Right, I, I used the mortgage inspection plan. And, and it's 40 feet from where to where? I scaled 40 feet from the, from the closest point of the house to the, right, to the right side property line. Oh, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> Well, it would appear, for example, that the house on the mortgage plan is angled slightly to the clockwise direction, whereas on, <coughs> on the plan attached to the application, it's square. Does that account for some of the differential? You've got 1 foot equals 1 16th of an inch equals a foot, so. Kind of tough to figure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I got a 16th scale, got an 8th scale. Well, let's just go back to the drawing that you submitted, and let me ask the question again. I mean, just 
looking at it on its face value, the garage is offset from the house by a considerable amount. Just look at uh, and right here. And so when I measured this out, and I, as I said before, my ruler leaves a lot to be desired, but it could be as much as six feet in there from your described edge of the driveway to the edge of the house, which is where the, the porch exists. And my question was, why don't you just move the garage closer to the house and in that direction and get away from the problem that you've got? Now, if Bruce measures it differently on this drawing and indicates it might be as much as two feet or three feet rather than the six I said, but. I think that when we were figuring it right next to the house, that it, um, it still would have needed a variance because it still wasn't 25 feet away from the, from the line. That was my recollection. And we just wanted to have the stairs. Other members have correct? Thanks. Do you not have one of these, ma'am? Do you not have one of these? Why don't you take that one, just in case there's any other questions. I have a question. And? The, um, one of the drawings that was submitted shows the two abutting houses on both the left and the right side having garages on the south side of their yeah. houses. Um, you stated that um, you could not put a garage on the left side of your, on the south side of your house because, of prop, because you didn't want to block solar right. um, potential, and yet your two closest neighbors have that situation. Could you? They, they don't have any windows on their south side. Um, they have a garage. I know they have garages, yeah. Um, yeah. The, um, you also stated that there um, was a problem with the leach field. Could you elaborate on, on that? Why, why couldn't there be a garage put in the same position next to your house that your two neighbors have? Um, for it to be, well, to be directly next to our house, it would block off all the sun. And I mean, I find in the summertime, in the wintertime that I just don't need to put the heat on in the house during the day because the house gets so warm from the, from the windows. Um, but setting it, offsetting it from the house so we could keep some of those windows, um, we would uh, be right at the edge of our leach field to set it back that far. And I just, I, my, my thought was that you can't put a leach field that close to a building so putting our garage touching right next to our leach field wouldn't be a, a good move. Do you know how old the leach field is? Oh, excuse me? Do you know how old the leach field is? How old the leach field? Um, not offhand. I'm sure I have it somewhere. The house was, the house was built in, I believe, 80, um, 83. It's coming up on 20 years. Yeah. <coughs> Have you considered? I mean, I know our neighbor on the, on, the, on the south side actually regretted losing when she had the garage built. Afterwards said she really regretted having it done on the left side and done it on the, on the solar side because um, it made such a difference in her house. But Have you given any consideration to locating the garage where the leach field currently is and building a new leach field? Within what? Have you given any consideration to locating the garage where the current leach field is and building a new leach field back further in the area? Uh, yeah. um, we weren't thinking of changing where the leach field was. We hadn't really probably only a few that. years away from having to do it anyway. But Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a hearing aid. You're probably only a few years away from having to do it anyway. Oh, having to do it anyway. Yeah. Actually, we just had it somehow redone, I think, this, this spring we had something major done with it. Go ahead, I think what Jack is saying is that you've got your entrance to the left side of the house. You've got your driveway already there. You can be 15 feet away from your septic system with a structure. You're asking for a variance, and in a variance you're supposed to prove hardship to us. And this is what we're asking you to, to do. And the garage, the, the proposed garage, is set back 
And I think this is what, what our question is. Why is it back as far as it is? Or at least that's my question. Why is, why is the garage set back, offset? Why isn't it closer to the house? Um, uh, and are you entering, entering the proposed porch from the garage? Is that going to be an enclosed porch? That would be a closed porch, that eventually a closed porch. We're eventually, down the road, looking at that as being an additional room. But that will be a long time. Okay, but where that would be the entrance to the house. Um, if we put the if we put the garage right next to the house at that point, and we we wanted to have with the the garage is going to be a two-story um, structure, it would block the windows on that side, which is the only windows um, in the children's bedrooms upstairs, and block the windows in the living room. We would have no windows because it's a gambrel, so it doesn't really the the roof. We don't have any. Um, any dormers or anything. So that's the, all, all our windows are on the side of the house in the front. So this is basically a detached garage that you're proposing to build? A detached, yeah. A detached garage. And we're going to build the, and the port with the porches. And that would be the, en the staircase would be the, um, the entrance into the house. And the staircase you would go into and there would be a double sliding door into the, what is a living room. Uh, you're getting ahead of me. If it's a detached garage, is there no reason then why you can't move it towards the center of the lot? Moving towards, towards the septic system, septic tank itself? In other words, um, um, if, looking on the, if we, if we did it on the south side of the house, it would be close to the No, I'm talking the left side, I mean the on, right side on the left, of the house. On the north side, we were proposing it? West side. The left side. Well, I, the, I'm, I don't see any arrows on my. So on any, north on is the to northly the right. side. Of, okay, the northly or the right side of the plan, the right side of the house. What I'm suggesting is you take the proposed garage and you move it towards the south side. Move it, but keep it on the access on the north side. In other words, just move the garage in back so you don't need a variance. Oh, in why, that? why, why can't you do it that way? Since it's going to be a detached. Um, the garage. septic tank is right back there, also. Yes, I see the location of the septic tank, but you, you. Then we'd have to build a much bigger driveway to go around. And I'll be quiet. And it would take off a questions. lot of our backyard. Most of uh, the houses in the neighborhood have the attached garage or garage like we were pr proposing. <clears throat> Bruce, as you recall, I had a screw up on that packet that, for item number four and I apparently don't have, now that I look at it, I don't have the uh, draft order. What is the, uh, the setback requirement is 25. Is that right? So we're actually talking about a 10-foot problem here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Thanks. My understanding was that the 25-foot setback was mm -hmm. made for lots that were designed after our house was built for like 80,000 mm -hmm. square foot lots, and ours, our lot is a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. My head was still back with the previous application where it was 20 feet in another setting. So. So the question that I asked about the gap between the, the driveway or the, between the corner of the garage and the corner of the house, uh, if that was actually five or six feet, it would solve your problem. It wouldn't because it still uh, would have four or five foot. It scales out to 20, 42 feet. 42? Yeah. From the corner of the house to the side lot line? On here, and it's 40 on here, so. Uh, So. 
Suggesting that it's 17 feet rather than 15? No, I mean, I, you can get, I mean, we got actually 40, 41 to 42 on the mortgage inspection plan, and, and this one is 42, so, I mean, on a scale of 140, you could read. Yeah, it's pretty tight reading. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's accurate, this is accurate in regards to the mortgage inspection plan to the extent that it's within the best document is available. <laughs> Although requiring something more. Yeah. <laughs> are there other questions, Joe? I just want a clarification. What are the rear side setback? I mean, excuse me, the side setback uh, requirements? Mean? Requirements. 25. 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So this garage could be built on the south side of the house without requiring a variance. Um, if that was done, we would lose um... Well, I'm looking at the side, what, what she pre presented to us on a, on a uh, side setback is 52 feet. And if you build a 24 by 24 foot garage, 24 from 52 40. 28. is 28. 40. Where'd you get 52? Well, oh, on the left side. Talking Excuse about me. the south side. On the oh, south oh, side. Oh, oh. This is what was presented to us in the application. And this is where the existing driveway is now and the entrance to the house. I'm just, I just need a clarification. If you're asking me if there's enough room, it appears to be by the plan. Okay. Um, if we did build it on the, on the south side of the house, um, upstairs we would lose all the windows in our in the bedroom, we have no windows on facing the front or the side of the house. Um, in the in two rooms downstairs, we'd also lose a window, um, which is considerable light. <laughs> It'd be a very dark house, and we do need the. Um, we're proposing a two-story garage so that we can use the upstairs um, as a work area and storage area. There is, a, there is still the option of, if you don't want to lose the soul again by having the garage abutting the south side of the house, the garage could be pushed back to where the septic leach field is right now. And then we'd have to move the leach field? We'd have to relocate the leach field. It would be a couple of thousand dollars. Your comment a minute ago that that would have to happen anyway. What you really meant was the sewer lines coming through there, or? No, 20 years is oh, just a lifetime before your leach field is totally plugged anyway. Yeah. Or it seems that the garage could be moved directly south from where it's proposed right now, mm -hmm. 10 feet, and that would bring it into compliance. Mm -hmm. And you might have to move the entrance to your garage around to the north side. Right. It seems to me that what the problem that she is facing is, and you might take note of this for the hearing that's coming up on October 19th for the public hearing, and that's before the planning board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The case that she presents seems to be the perfect example of why our current ordinance is inappropriate in a lot of cases. That's why we've been muttering about it for the last year. Because the ordinance as it now exists says that for us to be able to grant your ordinance, as I read it, you have to be able to show us that you will suffer an undue hardship if the variance isn't granted. Unfortunately, undue hardship is defined very strictly to say that the land without the variance, your land, cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. And then there are court cases from the main Supreme Court that says that failure to yield a reasonably, reasonable return means the practical loss of all beneficial use of the land. Well, it seems to me that you have beneficial use of the land. You've been using the house. 
it would be nice if you could add the garage and practically you're telling us this is the ideal place to put it. Mm. But the current ordinance doesn't permit us to make the decision based on practicality. But there's a proposed change to the ordinance that would permit us to make a decision based on based on practical difficulty, which is exactly what you're describing to us. But practical difficulty isn't the standard that we're entitled to make a decision hmm. on at the, under the current ordinance. Hmm. Hmm. You can make a decision, but it's not a favorable. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is why we're struggling with you to redesign your house. And we also do consulting I mean, on interior that, decorating if you want. Does that count as, <laughs> as return? I mean, if we have to redesign all our upstairs so we have more windows and add different lighting and different access to, we have to pay more for our heating system well, the problem during is the winter. You have, you, have I mean, isn't that, of, you have lots of other options, but you're telling us that the most practical option is this one. Right, right. We have, well, the options we have are not very desirable because they're between either having to relocate our septic tank, our septic leach field, which I understand is a major expensive job, and also redesigning our rooms upstairs and downstairs in order to get more daylight. We would be losing windows. And we wouldn't have any way of, um, you know, it'd be, it would be difficult. It would be a, it definitely would be a hardship. I guess I still haven't heard an answer to the question I asked house. a long time ago and, and Mr. Becker brought up again, and that is, why is it not possible to move the planned garage the required distance, and I'm not sure now what it is, but let's say it's somewhere between yeah. 8 and 10 feet from its proposed current location, sliding it that distance to the south, to the left on the plan, um, for so the septic tank, and, and then either, if that screws up the entrance to the garage, bring the entrance around to the north side, as he pointed out. Is it, what, what makes that not work for a garage? Um, so you're saying, like, just have it abutting the side of the house? I'm sorry? You're saying on the, keeping it on the north side, but moving it over? Keeping it right, yeah, keeping it as you light it out, except shifting it to the south. To the south. Whatever distance it has to be shifted to meet the well, standard. Well, if it's 15, it would have to be to 25. Yeah. It's 10 feet. So shifting it 10 feet is what we're talking about. Exactly. Which would still, it wouldn't be on top of, nothing would be on top of the septic tank, mm -hmm. I don't believe. We're struggling with you here because uh, one thing would, just one the thing problem Mr. Backer pointed out, we're kind of in a corner because there's no way that I at least, and apparently he and maybe other members, would feel comfortable with a standard about reasonable return, which is one of our required findings in this particular situation. <coughs> because there is, there are options and they may be less desirable options, I'll be the first to admit, from your point of view, but there are options. So. Uh, if, we, if we shifted the garage over, then I'm not sure of the, the access to getting into the garage with a car on the left side would be possible. I mean, we would have to shift over, this is 24 by 24, another 10 feet, and then you would be getting into that. Well, yeah, but you that can put the entrance to the, you just turn the garage 90 degrees and put the entrance to the garage on uh, the north side. And then we'd have to shop, do a sharp turn mm -hmm. right on the property line. Wouldn't that be a problem also having a I'm not driveway? trying to make you happy. I'm trying to make you legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I wonder what our neighbors would say. We'd take all those trees down to, to have it right on the property line to make a sharp turn, which in the wintertime would not be a <clears throat> proposition. <laughs> Well, in that event, you would have 25 feet in there. That's a, that's a pretty wide uh, area to work with, you know, between the entrance of the garage and the side lot line. Um, okay, are there any other questions uh, for the applicant? And we've questioned her to death here. If not, thank you, ma'am. We'll uh, close the hearing and uh, open it for discussion to board members. Hey, how, how likely is it that at the October meeting there will be a change towards the practical difficulty? Well, first of all, you have to understand that, that that meeting is just the planning board meeting. I was going to talk about it later during communications, but 
that's, that's the next step from the discussion we had at the last meeting, which by the way, I got no comments from you folks, so I assume that you were okay with the proposal. Yeah. Uh, the next step is for the planning board to have a hearing. That's what's on October 19th. They then have to make a decision as to what they're gonna to recommend to the council. Then the council has to take it up mm -hmm. and may choose to have a hearing of its own or not. But my guess is it's gonna be snow flying uh, and jingle bells ringing before this will even come up for a vote, let alone be acted that's, on. That's what I was wondering, yeah. So uh, this, this is not, we hope, I fervently hope that the council will adopt it and I certainly will testify every opportunity I get. Uh, but even if they did, it's not an, an immediate solution to this problem if, and, unless the applicant chooses to ask us to withdraw this or if, if the board chooses to uh, deny it, then, uh, and the, then what happens if the, if the ordinance changes? Are we stuck with a one year limitation? I personally would argue that if the ordinance changed to make something more feasible that I would certainly be, be willing to let it back in front of the board, whether or not that would be legal, I don't know. But. I believe in the new standards that the uh, applicant could come back, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, or of course the applicant could take any one of our numerous uh, and no charge <coughs> design recommendations and move the garage. <laughs> uh, so. Anyway, uh, uh, I guess, does that answer your question, uh, Jack? Thank you. Uh, any uh, other questions or discussion? Just to answer your comment about uh, the one-year rule, um, I note that the ordinance does say uh, that, that the board may consider a new appeal or application within the one-year period um, if a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. So certainly a change in the, in the ordinance would permit yeah, that. Great. Thanks for looking at that. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I'm open for a motion. Whoever wants to tackle it. Could I Bruce. suggest that, that uh, there's a letter from Mike Hill and I, that just came in this afternoon. You haven't had time to review, but you don't have to pass it out now. But I would suggest that his letter suggests that you find, do findings of facts and conclusions prior to a vote. Um, and on this particular issue, uh, I believe you should do that. Yeah. And then based on the conclusions, you, you, your vote should reflect what the conclusions, the conclusions should reflect what the vote is. Okay, so the, the conclusion. If you'd like to have a letter now and before you act on this, that's fine. This is just a generic letter if you'd like to look at that. Uh, but that's basically uh, what it says. Yeah, let's have the letter just for a minute, just so we don't screw this up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this came out of the difficulties we were having with several applications last meeting, and uh, Bruce and I couldn't come to an agreement about how to approach the problem, so we decided to turn to Mike Hill as an arbiter here. And I haven't seen this letter, so. This is where I uh, was uh, educated last month when I wanted a vote on each of the four standards and uh, because one did not pass, there was no need to continue on and that's the, the last paragraph on the first page. Um, but I mean, what he's saying is all have to pass and have the required number of votes to, on each four item, each, uh, each of the four items. Yeah. Well, I guess I want to read this more thoughtfully. It's more complicated than I thought um, on that particular issue, and that's the one that Bruce and I were having a particularly difficult time with uh, when we discussed this uh, last week. Uh, hmm, okay, let's see what he's saying. 
All right. Uh, just to having just glanced at that, uh, and rather than keeping uh, Ms. Stratner waiting here while we uh, do our own do our own studying, I think uh, we can press on ahead with what I've read. Uh, I, the basic facts seem to be that the application calls for a 10-foot uh, variance in order to set this uh, for a setback reduction, and uh, the. There were questions raised by the board as to whether a reasonable return uh, could or could not be met. Uh, and uh, it would be my interpretation that uh, the, the, the uh, conclusion would be that uh, the land can yield a reasonable return uh, without the variance as we interpret that in the ordinance and state law that the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Uh, the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality and the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. So having said that is my understanding of it, I leave it to someone who might want to make a motion to either uh, agree or disagree with my summary and uh, lead from that to a motion. Are you going to vote on the conclusions individually? Uh, we can if you'd like to do that. All right, I'll make a motion that um, um, oh boy, where was I? <laughs> um, I make a motion to deny the uh, variance for a uh, right side property uh, variance of 10 feet from the required 25 feet. Um, And I'm looking for the. Thank you, Mike. I think we did. You establish the conclusions because you asked if you're going to vote on them. Then you, now you're making a motion. I'm making a motion, and we're going to vote on them individually. Well, we should vote what on his them. letter says that you should establish the findings and the conclusions, and then as a result of those conclusions, you could form should form a vote or a motion, okay. and your vote should reflect what the conclusions have told you to, to vote. So Mike is suggesting that we vote without, without approval or denial. We just vote on whether each of the conclusions has been That's met. correct. And so then move to the motion. Uh, right. This is how Bruce and I got into trouble. because I, I don't agree with that procedure, but I don't see any reason why we can't use it. Well, based, well. <laughs> based on that procedure, I would make a motion Go ahead, that yield. the board find that the land in question mm -hmm. cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. That's, In order to that solves the problem. Is there a second? You, you clarification, you use the word cannot. Yes. I'm using the, the exact language of the ordinance. Okay. But you don't. But what's your intention? It, the my, conclusions my are, intention is that the board vote on whether or not that is a true finding in this case. Then there will either be a vote um, in favor of or in denial of the motion. Yeah, but if it's denial, then we're, we're left without a positive uh, in which affirmative case, statement. In which, which I'd want. case, the, in, the, the variance will have to fail because all four have to be met in the affirmative before it can be approved. Well, let's try it that way, see what happens. Which I think is what Mr. Yeah. Hill's letter is telling us. <clears throat> that's, that's fine to do it that way. It really probably it can go either way. Mm. Uh, if you gave me a choice, and I were making the motion, I'd prefer to make it a, in an affirmative uh, direction, but I think where you're heading, uh, David, gets there, so uh, okay. is there a second to the motion as David made it? I'll second the motion just for the vote. Okay. Uh, so the, the motion is that the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted, that the board find that or conclude that. Uh, in which case, if you uh, uh, vote against it, you would believe that it is possible for the land to yield a reasonable return. If you vote for the motion, then you're in agreement with it as stated. Yeah. Any questions about the motion as we're stumbling our way through this? <clears throat> if not, all those in favor of the motion as stated and those opposed. As a point of order, can I vote against my own motion? 
Uh, you, you can do whatever you want. Okay. I'm voting against oh. the second. I oppose the motion. So the, that motion does not carry. Uh, there's no need to do the others in that event. Uh, but for the. I believe that there is a need to do the others because if it's challenged to a, a court, the, the mm -hmm. conclusions should be, the, all the conclusions should be in the record. All right. Then if no one disagrees with my previous statement about, uh, as I summarized them, then you could combine two, three, and four in one motion. Or if you, if you are the mover and feel the need to do them separately, that's fine too. I prefer to see them done separately. Go ahead. Are you, are you asking me to make you, you open okay. the, the issue? Well, I expect the preference that we do each of them separately. Okay. So, okay I will Go ahead. Make a motion uh, that the board agree that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Second. Discussion. All those in favor of that motion? Those opposed to that motion? Mr. Firstashi is opposed. Uh, somewhat prepared to move number three, one way or the other. I will move that the board agree that the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of, of the locality. Second. Discussion. All those in favor of that motion. All those opposed to that motion. Three opposed, uh, two in favor, and that does not carry. And the final motion. I move that the board agree that the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Second. Those in, uh, discussion of that motion. And those in favor? Any opposed to that? Two opposed. And, I'm sorry, I didn't turn my hand. <laughs> Three to two, and that motion carries. Uh, then based on the above action with regard to conclusions, it uh, would seem that a motion to deny would be appropriate. Is that a motion? Uh, I can't make motions from the chair. I'm just asking for one because there's two of the four requirements did not get approved. So it follows that we can't approve an appeal. Let's make it real. <laughs> I would move then that we deny the uh, application for a right side property line variance of 10 feet from the required 25 feet to add a 24 by 24 garage and 14 by 14 by 7 by 14 porches to the existing single family dwelling. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Discussion of that motion? All those in favor of that motion? That carries unanimously. Uh, that leaves you with a choice, ma'am, of, of adjusting your plans or waiting to see what the town council does with our proposal to loosen up on that provision in the ordinance, give us a little more flexibility to deal with. I wouldn't say loosen up. In well, some, some people's eyes, it's not loosen up. So. Loosen up the procedure a little bit, give us a little more room to move uh, in certain situations, which is not assurance that a new application under that changed ordinance would necessarily be approved, but at least it would take a different uh, spotlight, if you will, on it and give us an, another perspective. Uh, I would encourage the board members to take uh, Mr. Hill's letter of September 28th home and study it and then put it under your pillow, as I intend to do. Uh, and uh, if you have any comments or objections to it, as I'm afraid I may, uh, then we'll try to thrash them out before the next meeting. Um, the next item on the agenda has to do with communications. Uh, this was one of them, so uh, I, for one, I'm, I'm not prepared to discuss this because I just need to read it more carefully and thoughtfully. And uh, hopefully I'll learn to love it. And uh, the other, another uh, item on the agenda for communications was the matter we, we sort of backed into discussing a few minutes ago, which was the uh, memo from Bruce Smith to the board, which he swears he never sent. <laughs> <laughs> or he didn't sign anyway. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, 
which transmits basically to us the uh, memo from the town planner, Marina Mira, to uh, the planning board setting up uh, the undue hardship variance standard being replaced with practical difficulty variance standard. Uh, I'd given you the, the essence of this at the previous meeting and asked for comments. And they went ahead and did it since we didn't comment. Uh, there will be a hearing, as I said earlier, on the 19th of October on this issue uh, in front of the planning board, uh, subsequent to which at their own schedule, whenever that might be, they will make a decision as to whether to recommend that uh, a change of some sort to the uh, town council, which ultimately has to modify the ordinance if it comes to that. Um, and you probably noticed in your review of the previous uh, memo from Marine that, that some of the other changes that came out of our discussion with the planning board uh, sort of went by the wayside in all the discussions as to what was legal and what was appropriate and this is where we're focusing the attention. So that's all I wanted to get to you. Does anybody want to comment on that or ask any questions? Or? Got one more item to talk about. If not, uh, you should have had in front of you a copy of a memo Excuse that I, I'm sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I do have a question on this. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I guess it's page, the third page on this attack, this uh, from Bruce, which we, um, the non-conformance chart is at the top of the page, down yeah. at the bottom of the page. You go through the variance criteria. Um, the current criteria, one is stricken out, struck out, as is two. And then there is a new criteria two, which is underlined, but there's no new criteria one, so I'm not sure whether something's missing here or whether we're just starting with number two here. Oh, which particular one are you looking at? Um, well, it's what starts section 19-5-2, powers and duties, yeah. variances, and current criterion one has been struck out. And that's the same wording. It's the same word. There's no change to, okay. to one. So That's it's language that comes right from the state. So it shouldn't be struck out then, right? So this would be one. Uh, they're eliminating item two. I'm okay. lost. Yeah, it would need to be stricken because you're trying to do away with reasonable return. Well, what I'm getting at is there's no number one now. We're starting with number two and whatever is the new language here. It, it appears, oh, oh, the line should appears continue on the through. top of that next page that one would read the need for variances due to the unique circumstances of the property. Okay, is that, is that intended to be one? I, I've lost. <laughs> number two it doesn't have, is that what you're talking about, number two on the third page, not having a line through it? What he's saying is that there is page no two on the bottom, he's eliminated, or uh, item one has been completely eliminated. Right. And then well, you go to page page three, and at the top, number two has been crossed out. Should that then be changed to number one, and that oh, is the new number no. one? I, I think the way this works, sort of having used this strikeout um, function in word processing way too many times, all this is showing is that the text of paragraph one has been stricken, and it'll be replaced by the text of what was paragraph two. So the text of paragraph, the text of what was two at the top of the next page just gets moved up and okay. becomes number one. Fine. And that's all this is that showing. It's an awkward way of showing it, but that's what it does. Well, like, one is on page two and not stricken. I think David answered my question. Thanks for picking that up. Uh, You know, it's interesting. I, I didn't uh, ever read this with care in this current version, but what they're really doing, if I understand, Bruce, is, is actually combining both things that we talked about, both changing the, side, the setback line, uh, numbers in several of the district locations, as well as incorporating the uh, practical difficulty language. Is that right? Yes, they are. That's interesting because I thought they were backing away from the, uh, you know, from the setback adjustment. So I'm glad to hear that. 
all you ever wanted and more. Yeah, that's, all, that's almost too good to be true. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see they did that because I think it makes the most sense. It fixes the problem that's, that's just gonna continue to haunt us in these districts with very small lots. And at the same time, it offers a little more flexibility for the zoning board to deal with it uh, as the issue comes up in uh, the remaining situations. And there will be more that will come up. Is there, a, is there a typo on that chart, nonconformance chart under um, second box down, side setback, and second box across RC district, 10 feet, the side setback for RC district, 10 feet is crossed out and 10 feet is put in? I don't know if it's a typo, but it's... What was it and what should it be? Yeah, more likely they do that just to make sure that the reader understands that it was intentionally left that way rather than overlooked. That's, that's correct, I believe. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Mm -hmm. okay. Joe? Yes, I have a question for the code enforcement officer. I realize you've only been here a couple of years now, Bruce. And boy, does time fly, huh? Can't use that excuse. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but has there been any explanation given to you as to why the um, areas in the Hampton Road area, Jewett Street, off the Fowler Road area, um, that zoning has increased so dramatically from whatever it was back then to 80,000 square feet, and therefore increasing these side setbacks and rear setbacks. I mean, those are small, small homes uh, built, and I, when they said 80, 83, I, I would have guessed in the 60s that that house was built, but um, most of the areas in that side of town, uh, the, the lot, minimum lot size is 80,000 square feet. Is that because of uh, no sewers, because of septics? Do they want to uh, basically restrict development in that in that area it's, and we have seen a lot of applications from those neighborhoods looking to expand the basic footprint of the house but they're restricted because of the the zone change um, generally can, speaking it's the RA district is 80,000 uh, and those areas such as that area in general is is was felt from my understanding that they didn't want a um, urban type environment such as what you get on the South Pole and end of some of the areas that's zoned RC, which is 20,000 square feet. And therefore, it does make some tough situations in, in small existing non-conforming neighborhoods. But I think the chart, uh, bringing it down to 15 and 10 uh, for those districts, coupled with the practical difficulty, will <coughs> address that problem um, <coughs> for those lots that are that are already small. All right, so the planning board then is, is saying that they recognized... They recognized problems in all areas of town, and this is, this is what they're trying to, to, uh, to accomplish, is to get something reasonable, a little work. To allow these people on so-called non-conforming lots to expand their homes. That's where the need would be the greatest, for sure. Yeah, okay. Just trying to get the intent. And, and uh, I think that I know that they're working hard at it to correct a serious situation here. And I, yes. think, I think that they're, they're, uh, they should be complimented on, on their efforts. Well, don't do that till they pass it. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, they have struggled with it. I, you know, I have to pat them on the back. They've come a long way from some of their initial concerns about it to recognizing the difficulties that we deal with and uh, it's been very helpful so I hope they can uh, feel comfortable in recommending this to the council. We had talked at some some point and maybe it was the joint meeting we had with the planning board way back in terms of um, how to deal with these setback requirements. Um, we talked about having a limitation on how much the zoning board could approve a variance that you couldn't reduce the setback by more than 50% or something like that. Um, is that lost? Has that idea been lost in the uh, Well, I think what or? Bruce could probably answer this better than I did if that even came up again. I don't think it did. I, I, I think 
the trend here is toward trying to, uh, after, they went, after they talked to Mike Hill and after they talked about it internally and Marine and Bruce talked about it, et cetera, et cetera, I think the trend of the thinking was to uh, not in, in reinvent the wheel, to try to stay within the context of the existing uh, ordinance and, and plan and or the state language. So for the practical difficulty part of it, they wanted to follow that pattern, which is really what's required anyway. And within the setback changes, they just wanted to recognize that these areas that we've just been discussing have built-in problems that need to be recognized that in a way different than the ordinance recognizes them. Uh, as I said a minute ago, I'm, I'm surprised that they put the two together because I thought they were going either or. Yeah, I so I think they concluded that, uh, and I'm just speculating here, that uh, uh, the necessary changes in the setback was the first step and that they were comfortable allowing the zoning board to grapple with you know, the practical difficulty standards as a more uh, as a more useful tool for dealing with those things which don't fit. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if we're ready to move on to the other uh, communication, you should have had in front of you tonight a, a memo that I faxed up to uh, Bruce for distribution tonight after he and I had a conversation a couple of days ago. Uh, on the uh, issue that we presented to the board about uh, sketch plans, to the, uh, excuse me, to the council about sketch plans as opposed to mortgage plans. And uh, I got a call the morning of the last council meeting two weeks ago to come to the meeting and uh, represent the board on this issue, which I did along with Bruce. And uh, we, we initially met with, uh, well, the first series of questions I would say was pretty positive and I was feeling pretty good. We were heading down a, a good path here and the council was gonna be comfortable with the change we proposed, but as the discussion went on, the council members became less comfortable with it, which means probably I should have stayed home, might have been better off, but. <laughs> uh, and I think that comes out of a couple of reasons. One is that, uh, we really don't have, we had to admit, and you know, it's not like you're hiding anything, but we just don't have a, a database that we've been able to build that's consequential enough to convince the councilmen, council members uh, that there is a serious problem here. We have anecdotal evidence on a few cases, but we've only been requiring the mortgage plan for roughly a year and uh, in order for us to have any hope of saying, you know, there's a trend here or seriously a serious problem, uh, we just couldn't, you know, come up with data that would satisfy the questions they were asking us. Uh, and the second was that, the, that several of the council members who seemed willing to go along with what we were proposing, although they weren't at that moment fully convincing to, the, to the, those who were opposed, or at least uneasy, is that um, they, they wanted to suggest a two or even a three-tier system, that is to say that rather than imposing the additional cost between the mortgage plan and the sketch plan, which is about $275, $300, something like that, on everybody coming in the door, isn't there a way, they asked, for us to screen those that uh, really need the additional uh, information for a sketch plan. And uh, one even suggested that uh, rather than feeling comfortable letting us just sort of drift into the full bore survey plan, that they would want some criteria for what requires a survey plan as well, since the cost for that certainly does go very high. And we batted back and forth a few ideas about that, but was the more Bruce and I talked about that, after the meeting, the less and less comfortable we got that there was any way for us to come up with criteria that we could live with and, and that even if we could, the whole purpose in this uh, recommendation for the sketch plan was that the uh, 
mortgage plan was based on inadequate data you know, by definition in most cases and there was no easy way uh, to be sure that it wasn't needed. I mean, one, one of the ideas we tossed out, for example, was if, just to pick something out of the air, if uh, the proposal cost less than $50,000, or if the proposal was incurred, incurred in, uh, had an incursion into the setback area of less than 50%, pick a number, it was just, it, just as a concept, then in those cases we would ask for a more rig rigorous, uh, the next step up, the sketch plan. Um, and uh, we just couldn't get ourselves, at least the two of us, comfortable with that concept. I'll let Bruce speak for himself. But uh, so the end result of all the discussion he and I had and, and how best to respond to the council led to me doing this memo, which I am sharing with you uh, in draft form, uh, just so we can discuss it tonight so that if you uh, as a board feel that you want to say something different or say it differently, uh, that we can do that and I'll be glad to edit or modify this letter to reflect whatever your desires are. But basically what the letter says is that we would like to continue with the current policy into the foreseeable future, build a database that we can stand on one way or the other and then uh, basically as I told them at the meeting, anytime the board's uncomfortable with the data that's in front of them, which is to say if the mortgage plan is inadequate and the applicant has not chosen to provide a sketch plan or a survey, then the only option left to the board is, or to individual members is to choose to vote against it if they're not comfortable with the database in front of them and so the applicant may in that manner lose out, but it's a tried and tested methodology. We know it works, so if that's what it comes to, we can do that. So basically what I'm saying to them is we're not comfortable with the system you proposed and our database is not adequate for us to, to come back and argue with you about it. I didn't put it that way, but, uh, and therefore we'd like to uh, step back and give some more thought to this and let our database build up. So I'll shut up. Uh, want to add anything, Bruce? No, you did a fine job. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so I'll leave it open if, if any board member has questions about uh, whether this is the right thing to do or whether you, uh, you'd prefer wording it some other way or whatever, I'd be more than glad to take, an, uh, take those recommendations and change the memo. I wonder whether it would make any sense for the board to have the option of, in its initial hearing of an applicant's appeal, make a recommendation or actually a binding request that the applicant come back with a sketch plan if they feel that's required. Well, one of the things I suggested to the council as we were, as I said, batting it back and forth was just that, that basically, actually at that time I guess we were talking about the survey plan and what I suggested is there was clearly some uneasiness among all the council members about having any automatic transition to a survey plan right. where the cost goes up to fifteen hundred, two thousand exactly. dollars yeah. And so I recommended that we start with the base of the sketch plan and then at the applicant's request, if a survey was being suggested by uh, the code enforcement officer that uh, the rules allow the person without prejudice to come to the council, to the board and explain why they thought a survey wasn't necessary. Uh, and the board could then require it or not. Uh, but we did not discuss what, you, what you're doing is taking that movement and down one step so the sketch plan would come to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not discuss that. Um, it certainly seems that there, there's a very um, small number of cases where we really want that definition and we need to have the option to be able to get it in those instances where there are questions. Right. Do we, can we clarify, do we have that, do we have that um, authority now to request? That? I believe Henry's letter reflects the fact that we will review on, uh, you will review on a case-by-case -case basis. If you haven't got enough evidence in front of you to make a decision, 
or if there's a conflict because a neighbor believes that the line is not where the applicant's saying it is, then you have exercised the right to, to require more information in order to make a decision. At that point, they have, a, they have a decision to make. They can walk away or they can bring in something that you'll be comfortable with. So I believe you have that option now and you'll continue to, to have that option such as that. And we have exercised that option by encouraging somebody to believe that tabling would be a preferable option to what is likely to happen if, mm -hmm. if Joe keeps asking a lot of questions, which is what you know, sometimes triggers that. And, and he's, he's quite often found some serious anomalies in the situation. So, uh, But when I was asked for specific examples about things, the only one we could come up with was the famous garage that got built you know, and had to be torn down to be moved, and uh, that wasn't convincing enough for them to feel comfortable having this sort of open-ended switch to the sketch plan. And I don't, you know, I don't blame them. I, I would have liked it if they'd gone along with it, but I, I understand it. And uh, if, if there was never a need to go beyond the sketch plan, I think the council, I'm assuming the council would be a little bit more receptive. But because there was a need sometimes to send the applicant away to get something to get a full survey, uh, I think that's what they were uncomfortable with. But simple, the simple fact is that that's the ones that would need it the most because a, a surveyor wouldn't sign off on a sketch plan anyways. Um, but I guess we can get by with a mortgage inspection plan and document what's happening and maybe revisit this in a in is this Is this issue addressed in the ordinance anywhere? Mm -hmm. No. As to the re requirements no, that in fact, they submitted with any application to the board? Not in, no, not specifically. And in fact, uh, as I indicated in my earlier comments, uh, it's only been about a year since the board, out of frustration, began just on its own requiring the mortgage. Plan. And uh, we decided uh, that moving from that, which costs about 125 bucks, or most people have them anyway when they get their mortgage, uh, uh, moving from that to the sketch plan, which is four to $500, was probably something we didn't want to try to do on our own because it just, it, it's too high a profile cost increase and uh, probably we we're testing our, the limits of our authority and then maybe going a little beyond, so. The ironic part of this is that, that the code enforcement officer does have the option to require an applicant to provide a boundary survey. Oh, really? You do. <laughs> upon it, upon application for a building permit. Um, so I mean. Um, well, Bruce, why are you shoving this off on us then? Why don't you just do it if you feel the need. Now that's just for a boundary survey. Would that include a sketch plan if you felt it was appropriate? It says boundary survey or mortgage inspection plan. You know, I, but I'm in the same quandary as, as this board that, that I'm not going to require a boundary survey unless there's, there's some hard evidence that, that I believe what's being presented is not accurate. And that would have to be because a neighbor who came to me and said I have a problem with this and had evidence to, to, in, to con contrary to what the applicant has submitted. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not going to exercise that, that, uh, that right either. Well, I'm going to drag this out any longer necessary. If uh, you want to talk about more, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm just going to send this memo in the next day or two, and uh, we'll plot all along with what we have. And, and I think the other thing that Bruce has pointed out is that if he is able to point out to applicants that in this particular situation that they're proposing, they would, based on experience, perhaps do better to provide more information for the board that in some cases job owning like that will, you know, perhaps draw the applicant's attention and, and give us improved information, but not always. And so we have to be prepared to act accordingly. Okay, anything else that ought to be in front of this august body before we adjourn? Thank you very much. Uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay. The meeting is adjourned.